Well, the next thing really is to make the decision that you are going to dominate the whole space. Is we have this traditional way of thinking, which is that we need competition. And most people actually, most people almost react and respond to um, the demands of other people and what other people are doing. It feels as though we're always somehow standing and looking across the fence to see what the other person is doing. You see, by limiting yourself to a philosophy of actually competing with, and that, that could actually be healthy competition, there's nothing wrong with that, um, is that you, you almost have to adjust your performance to suit someone else's performance. Is if I'm competing with you, it means that when you have a good game, I have to have a good game. So think about this like uh, in the sports of martial arts or boxing. You know, you have two boxers, two good boxers. They've been training, they're ready for the fight. It's that one person's style of fight um, almost is dictated by what the other person is doing. Now, those who are true champions, those who actually go on to actually achieve great success, are those who actually do not vary their style. Now, I don't mean in terms of strategy. Your strategy has to be adapted. But what I mean in terms of, I mean in terms of, they don't lower the bar, is that they have a, a, a minimum level of performance because really they're saying, I'm not really, I'm like a thermostat. I'm not controlled by what's going on outside. Is if the, if the temperature drops, think about this, if the temperature drops outside, you internally, if you have a, maybe a cooling system or a heating system, an AC, is that it adjusts to suit the external temperature. If the, the, the weather condition actually gets hot, the air conditioning system actually kicks in, so actually you can adjust to the extra heat. You've got to see yourself beyond just being almost like a thermostat. Or, um, and that simply means you resolve within yourself that excellence and mastery is your creed and that irrespective of what other, other people are doing irrespective of what's going on in the environment that you would always commit to um, almost a lifestyle an attitude um, an approach that is always your best which means you must give 10 out of 10 and that simply means you make a decision and you have this principle behind you that simply says I don't compete I'm here to dominate you know I am here you know see yourself like the king of the jungle you know the lion has this attitude and I love the, the, the whole almost the attitude of a lion it understands it's not the biggest animal in the jungle but its attitude is one that says I'm the boss you you have to have the same attitude as a lion where you simply say I don't compete I'm here to dominate which means I'm here to actually set the bar is that you set the bar so high that everyone else actually has to outperform themselves to get close to you is that you, you go so fast that actually you don't actually bother looking at your rear view mirror you don't bother looking at your side mirrors you simply keep your head forward you know, just keep your face forward on the windscreen because actually that's where you're trying to get to whatever's happening behind you is none of your business so the principle I'm talking about here is simply make a decision that you will not compete in the office that you will dominate and transfer that attitude across not just let it go beyond yourself let it be a, an attitude you actually bring to the company so even though your company has competitors you don't really need to know what your competitors are doing reason being actually means you always you're always trying to adjust your play to suit your competitors no why don't you just rewrite the rule books and make the other competitors chase after you? So dominate. Whatever you do, make a decision to dominate. The next principle really is a principle of flexibility and adaptability. Powerful, so powerful, but also very often overlooked. Is if I sat down, or if you sat down with anyone and you said, I want you to describe maybe 20 key fundamental qualities a successful person should have. I'm, I'm very 
I'm very certain that adaptability and flexibility will not make that list of the top 20. But I actually believe that it should be in the top 10. And the reason is simply is that your willingness to adapt really decides the longevity of your career. Is if you think about it this way, we don't have dinosaurs any longer. They're extinct. They're gone. The reason? They couldn't adapt. We have giraffes. We have giraffes that have really long necks. Why? Because they were willing to adapt. You see, back in ancient times, all of the animals that actually um, lived in the jungle had to almost compete. It was the survival of the fittest to actually get food. And what the giraffes actually learned was actually by extending their necks just a little bit higher, they were able to actually reach some food on the trees that no other animal could reach. And the more they did that, the more their necks stretched and they continued to grow and they continued to grow. And that led to the point where the quality of the food they were able to actually eat was the richest because actually it was the part of the trees that was most exposed to all of the sun rays and the sunlight and the, you know the rain now whilst the other animals actually stayed below the giraffe actually grew it was willing to adapt now you must see yourself like the way Muhammad Ali says you know you know I flow like a butterfly but I sting like a bee be flexible be flexible in martial arts the the people or the, the competitors who are the best and even you know any form of you know you might say physical activity the, the ones who are the best are those who are very flexible you know the ones who actually don't use so much energy you got to stay free and relaxed you must see yourself like water is if there's a need for you to be molded or shifted in a direction just maybe temporary that you go for it now what you do not want to do is be the kind of person who is always changing. No, what I'm referring to here really is that because a business is really people. A business is really people. And because it's really people, it means you will have feelings and emotions and behaviors that change. And because one thing that is guaranteed in life is change, is that people's feelings and emotions and behaviors will change during the day. Now that is compounded by the pressure from work, the pressure they experience from maybe their personal lives. Everything is brought to one location in the working environment. So whether you're dealing with your colleagues, whether you're dealing with your boss, whether you're dealing with perhaps clients, always remember this, is that in some cases, people will behave in a manner which is not congruent with who they really are. And that could just simply be as a result of the states that they find themselves. Maybe, maybe escalated by an event that just happened which you may not be aware of. Your willingness to actually just stay flexible helps you build a, a bridge. You see, I think adaptability and flexibility is, it helps you build a bridge between two, like, two cities, you build a bridge. And you can make a choice really to decide, I'm going to build this bridge, which means when things don't feel right, I'm going to be the bigger person and I'm going to adapt. To keep the relationship going, to keep the business going, I'm going to adapt. But be careful that it's not seen as, a, as something that you would always do. You know, the, the process of actually being flexible is not something you want to do every single hour of every single day. And any environment that expects you to be that flexible every single hour of every single day, I believe that's they're quite manipulative. I don't think that any company or any employer, I don't think any even employee should expect that of someone else. We should have dignity, we should have character, we should have the respect to allow people to be who they are. But you use this as a good example. Let's say, um, let's say you're working on a project and 
Maybe your boss asks for a reduction in your lunch break and says, we have to get this ready for the clients by noon. Would you mind? Would you mind either delaying your lunch break or would you mind shortening your lunch break just so we can meet this company's objectives? In that instance, I think you should adapt. I think you should be flexible. If your boss comes and says, well, we're running late, we need some extra pair of hands, at the end of the day, we need an extra one hour. Now, even if you've made plans, depending on the type of plans you've made in terms of your personal commitments, see if you can actually adapt. Because in most cases, it really takes, um, it really takes a lot for um, either a company or an employer to actually say, well, could you sacrifice even more than you have already? In those instances, I think your willingness to actually be flexible would actually create almost a platform for your recognition to be seen and for you actually to outshine and do more. Remember what I started off by saying? I said, always create more value than you're paid for. Flexibility and adaptability gives you the platform to create more value. Really important. Make a decision to create more value. Now the next principle, really, or the found, found, um, the almost philosophy you must have is to, to always be punctual. Never turn up late. Never. Always arrive to work. I would say actually always arrive to work. Um, if you choose to actually do your personal development and your professional development time from home, then always make a decision to be at work at least at least 20 minutes before the day starts. What that helps you do, it helps you get there, it helps you get yourself ready because you've changed the environment. Think about this. When you move from your home environment and you travel, you come out and you're perhaps traveling through um, either by public transportation or you're driving, you're in a different environment now because you're now outside your home. Then you move into a third environment, which is actually the working environment. Now, each of those environments, almost they have a, what I would call a, a level of expectation in behavior. In your home, the environment is, is one that you decide it could be one that is actually warm. It's one that's peaceful. Um, when you go step out of the house, you're now actually in the world. That is more of an environment that is act that requires you to be more, um, maybe more responsive. That requires you to be more alert to what's going on. Um, you can't just afford to just be relaxed. That is, if you're driving, perhaps even if you're taking public transportation, um, when you come into the working environment. It's a business environment. It's an area where it's a combination of, well, we want to have fun, but the core purpose for us is actually to create value for our customers. We have a vision, we have a mission, and so we're here for formal reasons. It's not a place to go and play. By arriving about 20 minutes or 15 minutes earlier, what it helps you do is helps you transition from the external environment you've just come from to what's required. So you get yourself mentally prepared. You can visualize your day. You can, you can look around and see what you want to achieve. You can get yourself emotionally ready, depending on where you work. It could be actually work in, a, in an industry that requires a lot of maybe relationship management with clients. So you can get yourself emotionally ready so you can deal with the day you're on your A game because in most cases, it's not about, think about this, it's not about having an excellent game where you have a good day. It's that what you want is a consistent series of games. So what you want is game excellence, where every day you're getting better and better. Every day you're exceeding expectations. Every day you're being excellent. You're showing true mastery in what you do. So make an effort, make a commitment to yourself that says, I'm never going to be late. I'm always going to be on time. And you do that also for another reason. 
You do that simply because time is money. And time is the most important asset you have. And because time is money, for every minute you're late, it's a minute potentially lost in being able to provide value. One of the biggest mistakes most people make is the, the assumption that they say, well, I'll just work an extra 30 minutes at the end. No. You know, if a business starts at nine, it means it's ready to actually trade at nine. Now, I know some people, some cu customers and some clients who will ring and this could be people ringing from a different, just imagine this, they could be ringing from a different country. Who will ring a business that they want to work with at nine o'clock? If they ring at nine and there is no one to pick up the phone and they try again at nine, say 9.15 and there is no one to pick up the phone, they call another competitor. That's if they haven't formed a relationship with that particular company because people are looking for people who want to do business with them. If I ring your office at nine o'clock and there is no one to pick up and I ring at quarter past nine and there is no one to pick up, you're sending a message. The message you're sending really is, we don't take ourselves seriously and therefore we may not take your business seriously. It's the wrong message to send. So always make yourself a promise that you will never be late. Now there will always be exceptions to that. But let it be that the day you're late, people know something went wrong. It's about preparation. It's all about preparing in advance. Get yourself up early. Get to work early.